Welcome back to the shop. I'm getting ready to start another veneer project. And I thought I'd go over all the different tools that you'll need to work with veneer. And since I've been doing this so long, you kind of forget some of the tools that you actually use. Some of them are pretty obvious tools and some of them are just kind of things that you picked up along the way or things that you may have in the shop that you end up using for your veneer projects. When you get your veneer, it's going to come in a box. When you go to put your leftover veneer away, I like to use this saran wrap. This is great because you can just roll your veneer back up, wrap it up again to keep it from unrolling, and either put it back in the box or put it in a shelf somewhere in your storage. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. So of course you're going to need a razor knife. I'm gonna be careful not to cut into the veneer. And then again, I'm gonna be using the razor knife to cut the veneer. I'm happy to partner with Geo Veneer on this video. I've been working with Geo Veneer now for quite a few years, and I've built quite a few pieces of furniture using veneer from Geo Veneer. What I love about working with veneer is you don't have to deal with some of the issues that you have to deal with when you're working with solid wood, like expansion and contraction. So essentially, you could build a plywood box, cover it with a beautiful piece of veneer, like this piece of fumed eucalyptus, and you have a beautiful piece of furniture. So before you start your next project, I hope that you'll visit GeoVeneer at geoveneer.com. Check out all the different wood species that they have available. And also check out some of my veneer projects on my website. I've got a ton of projects there, and they all have video tutorials right here on YouTube designed to help guide you through the project. Before I start cutting the veneer, I put a piece of quarter inch plywood on my work table. This is a four by eight quarter inch sheet of just some crummy birch plywood, nothing special. And this gives a support to the veneer so I can cut it. I'll lay it out on the table and then use a squeeze clamp. It's another tool that you're going to need. And I hang the veneer over the quarter inch plywood by about a quarter of an inch. And that way it's supported for when I take my measure measurements from the edge. And then here's another tool that you're going to need. This is a long straight edge. It's just a piece of aluminum. It's two inch by a quarter of an inch. And you should be able to get this at any home store or hardware store. And that's what I'll be using for the straight edge. And I can take my measurements. So let's just say that I want, of course you need a tape measure. I don't know where my tape measure is. There we go. Let's say I want to make a rip at 15 inches. I can clamp my straight edge in place and I can always test it by measuring from the edge to the edge of the straight edge where I'll be making the cut. I've measured and marked at 15 and a half inches. I'll move the straight edge over to that mark, clamp it in place, and I can test my measurements on both ends by measuring to the straight edge. So I'm a little bit shy, so I am gonna move that over just a little bit. And now I'm right at 15 and a half. I'll double check the other end and that looks good. Now I use the razor knife and I always put a brand new blade in the knife whenever I'm working with veneer. You want a good sharp blade. Your straight edge is only going to be about eight feet long because that's the standard length. The veneer is usually about 97 inches long, so a little bit longer than a sheet of plywood. So you're not supported here. So my first cut, I kind of bring it out to here and just make that cut. Now I'm ready to cut the length of the veneer. Usually takes about two scores to make the cut. You can see I'm all the way through down at the other end. And there we go. I'll wrap this back up. I always like to get rid of the extra right away because I don't want to keep it out and potentially damage it. Now that I have the veneer ripped to width, the next step is to make the cross cuts. And for that, I'll use a framing square. 
Sometimes it's helpful when you're making your cross cuts to clamp this end of the square and that'll keep the square from moving over if you put any pressure against the edge of it with your knife. Now that I have the veneer cut to size, I'm ready to get started with the contact cement. I like to use this. This is the solvent-based contact cement in the red can. The water-based contact cement, also known as unflammable in the green can. I think it's a little bit more trouble than it's worth. You'll need to use a clean pan. I used this for contact cement last time, so this will just dissolve with the solvent. If you had paint in your tray, you could always line your tray with tinfoil or tray liner. I like to use a four inch roller. Sometimes it's a good idea to run tape over the roller to remove any potential fuzz like that right there. And you'll need a throwaway brush. I'm gonna open this up and give it a good mix. And as soon as I turn off the camera, I'm gonna put on a respirator. So this is another thing you're gonna need if you're going to work with veneer. When I'm working with veneer, I may be using it over the course of a few days. So to be able to reuse the roller, the brush, and the pan, I make a lid with tin foil. And this works really good. You just take your time, make sure you seal everything up, and you should be able to reuse this for at least three or four days. It's been two days, and the contact cement in this pan is still good. In fact, I'm going to use it again as soon as I turn the camera off to veneer the other side of this board. And if you want the contact cement to last even longer, you could always put this into a plastic bag, kind of fold the bag underneath it, and that'll make it last a bit longer. A few of the other things that I used to attach the veneer to the substrate are these sticks. Contact cement only sticks to contact cement, so the sticks will allow you to position the veneer so you have an even overhang all the way around and if you don't have the sticks you could also use quarter inch dowels. I have these usually people have scrap wood lying around so I just make a couple of sticks I leave them over in the shop and I use these on just about every veneer project. The next tool would be this piece of plywood this is for putting pressure on your veneer. Yes a lot of people use a J roller I think this works better. It's just a piece of quarter inch plywood with a round over on both sides. The round over is to keep from scratching the veneer, but this allows you to get a lot of pressure, ensuring a good bond between the veneer and the substrate. The last tool will be your router with a flush cut bit, and that's for trimming the edge. So it's really pretty simple to work with veneer and it opens up a ton of design possibilities. So I hope that you'll build something with veneer. And if you do, post it on Instagram, tag me. I'd love to see what you made. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. To learn more about working with veneer, visit my website at johnpeters.com. With projects that range from beginner to advanced, I'm sure you'll find something that will inspire you to spend more time in the shop and build a beautiful piece of furniture for your home.